Good evening, beloved brothers and sisters in Yeshua. This is Linda Rose Spirit Song. I come to you, the body of Messiah, those who will take the time to hear this, this video. This is another one that I share with a, a very heavy heart because once I was shown something and I really brought this to, to Abba, Yahuwah, in prayer, there was no turning back for me. Now, where do I start? First, I'm going to start in prayer. Father, I know this is something you really, really want me to share because it is time. It is time to bring forth something that I have been dealing with, grappling with, um, struggling with myself because of some of the things that were attached to what I'm about to say that has kept me from really throwing myself headlong into, into this. And I, I know it's, uh, if I don't, if I don't share it, I, I, I don't think I can sleep. I can't, as I said, this is burning so much in my soul. This is so heavy upon me. It's just been on me all day since, since last night. It hasn't stopped. And in my prayer time and talking with you and you talking with me about this and this whole everything that you gave me just came pouring out pouring out like a, like like floodgates and I have to get it out or else I just I don't know what to say I uh, if I don't get it out I know I will not be in your will I will not be in your will um, I won't be able to do anything until I get this accomplished and there is going to be, for me personally, no turning back once I get this out as far as what you've instructed me personally to do. And then whoever else, depending on what they do with the information and what I share with them, it's going to be up to them. So, Father, I ask for your help. Showing me, please, Father, how do I convey this in a way that others will be able to know my heart and not must misunderstand what I'm going to have to share that has been shown to me. And I don't share these things to condemn or to judge your people, because a lot of what we have received and we, we, we have come to know through this, through so much of this deception, we, we don't know. Many of us have not received this information and these things that are being revealed now in this time that we are in. But once we're shown, we need to do something now with what we've been shown. And there's no more excuse for being ignorant. So I ask you, Father, for you to um, help me put this out there. Because I'm, I'm struggling. I mean, there's so much that it was pouring out of me this morning, pouring out of me throughout the day, pouring out to me as I got to share it with another sister. It's just been pouring out. And now it's not that it's not there. It's just being able to put this forth. I don't want anything. I mean it, Father. I don't want anything of my flesh. I want this to be so you and how I would present this. I know it's going to cause a, 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 a rippling effect. It's, it's going to ruffle a lot of people because I'm going to be sharing some things that are going to be like, they're going to be shocking, especially for those who want to go deep with um, the link I'm going to post in the description. And those who want loads more information will have to ask for me to send that to them via their email. 
there's lots there. I won't be able to go into detail about that. I won't. That's you don't want me to. But just what you have been showing me about this and some things that I can share that you are giving me the liberty to share. And, and, and that which you don't want me to share, others are going to have to search for it for themselves. But once I get this out there, I know, Father, that I will not be held accountable. It's now going to be on those who want to take whatever it is that you're putting on my heart to share and it's going to be up to them to bring this before you and to search these matters out themselves. I ask this in your name, Father, in the name of Yahushua Messiah. Your will and not my will be done. Okay. Well, last start started with uh, early last night, maybe sometime after I ate, I ate my dinner. I was looking for something in particular, and in looking for one thing, it led me somewhere else. It led me to a, I would call it a blogger. I'm going to read to you the title of this, and I will be putting the link to this, um, to this that I, I, I read and I was in shock after reading it all. But I want you to know that the title of this, as you will see that, the title of this is um, Talk About Changes. I'm shocked after what I read. And then even after more information that was sent to me, I knew about some of these things in part, but not to the extent of the, the research and what I was now ready to, ready to receive. There's a reason why I've been resistant in receiving some of these things as I will proceed and share that with you in time. I want to start off by saying the reason why I was given this title, Talk About Changes, because there was something that um, Riker Esoteric Remnant, when his last live stream that he um, asked me to join him, it was just a spontaneous stream and um, I posted that I mirrored it on my YouTube channel and it's titled from soup soup to nuts uh, something for everyone so there was a couple of nuggets there things that, that were heavy on my heart that the Holy Spirit the Ruach HaKodesh revealed to me that I got to share with that stream and 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 one of the things that's been really heavy on my heart. And this is nothing against any of you out there who are going down this road or this journey, but it's, it's, it's more as a warning and a caution to, to those of you who are spending more time searching these things out and being bogged down by it than, than not. And this is why the title, Talk About Changes. There are those the, who are have seen and I've seen them too. Some changes that have taken place in, in the Bible, the King James Version and other versions. And, um, but it was not anything that the Father wanted me to really go down that trail. I knew there were some things, but they weren't personally for me in my journey, my walk. They weren't enough to shake me. They weren't enough to affect me in any way as far as keeping me from reading the scriptures at all. The scripture that I was given um, really shed some light on a lot of this for those who are really very, very concerned about these changes, either shaken up or they're becoming a bit obsessed in this um, 
in this research, or even what's coming before them, what they're seeing. This is taken out of um, Matthew 23. 23, I believe. Yes. So I will read it to you. And, and it says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you tithe mint and dill and cumin and have neglected the weightier matters of the law. That's right, the law, the Torah. That's what Torah is, is the law. It's the instructions that were given to us by Yahuwah throughout his word. And which is also justice, mercy, and faithfulness. These you ought to have done without neglecting the others. And this really spoke to me. Because this is what's going on, that there's, there's, there, there's such great concern as to them seeing bottles when they always saw wineskins or the lion lion the lion that lays down with the lamb but now it's the wolf or of having to do with paps there's a, a, a number of things a number of changes that others have seen and i am not discounting that or even coming against anyone for seeing these changes that's not what this is about but what this is about goes beyond this. Where th those of you out there are so busy looking and seeing and very, being very concerned about these changes when we're not concerned about that which has been changed for a long time that we have been deceived by for a very long time <laughs> since the scriptures have been put out there. And there are those who you're, oh, you're, uh, King James only, uh, they throw this out, they said they stand behind this, and this is the closest to the truth, and with all of that being said, I don't care what Bible it is, we know there are corruptions, but not enough. The, the, the weightier matters of the law, of his word, that matter, they're not changed. Those are the things we need to hone in on by the Holy Spirit. But let's go deeper for those of you who are so concerned about these changes. What you ought to have been concerned about is the one that many of you are not seeing. Many of you have been taken, just taking it at face value because that's what it says. It says it throughout scripture. So we have taken that to be the truth. And what would that be? Three, three things I'm going to point out. And when I say this, please understand, I will make a disclaimer when I say this, because I've, I've, I've known, I've known about this. I've asked about the, I asked the father about this. Why is this bugging me? Why is this bugging me? And I would come close or I, when, when I would go down that road, then I would find the waters being very muddied. So it kept me from going down that road. But right now where the Father has me, no matter what others have done to it to try to throw me or others off track, after what I've seen and what was brought to my attention through this deeper dive and study into these things, it doesn't matter what other peoples have done and whatever their motives and the condemnation and the judgment that they have been bringing because they're of the wrong spirit. And the Father is not pleased with that. That's not why I'm presenting this. I'm very concerned about something, and I do believe we are coming into a time that he's revealing this to many others too, on their own. Why? Because they love the truth. So these things are going to be revealed. What we ought to have been concerned about is what they did to his name. That's right, his name. Just think about that for a minute. The, what they have put in the scriptures doesn't matter what translation is, including you once only King James version. And I know the reason why you're having problems with those who are trying to put the 
write names in some of these, like the, the, the TS uh, 2009 or the Et cetera, trying to put the correct name. Although there are some issues there and there are some discrepancies even in them, not so much with the Et cetera, Et cetera, the issue that I have with. There's some things that have been put out there that lean a little on, that has a little bit of a, a, a Kabbalah edge to it. I'm not saying the very names, but some other things, and I won't go into that. Um, so, but that does not mean that we are not to reach for and desire to call him by the name that he deserves to be called by. He does not to be des he does not deserve deserve to be called by these, even though he's been very patient and long suffering with us, because we have not known the truth. So he has still worked even with, with these, these, these errors that we have been in. But there is coming a time, as it says in Acts 17, verse 30, and the times of this ignorance Elohim winked at, but now commands all men, all men everywhere to repent. And I'll tell you what this repentance is. A lot of it has to do with the name. His name is not Lord. His name is not God. His son's name is not Jesus. I know many of you are going to be extremely offended that I said that, but it is the truth. It is the truth. Because if you would be bold enough to get beyond the shallow waters or just believing what other people have said without you doing your own, being a good Berean and searching these matters out yourself, you would come to know something, and I will share a little bit of that with you. Let's take the name Jesus, which is um, G2424. Now, I'm going to get into something here that's going to kind of blow your mind. It, it, it did mine when I started to put these, even these numbers together. It's Iesus. Now, they're going to tell you what that means. It's an outline of the biblical usage. But when you go down here to, you know, it's saying uh, Jesus equals Yehovah is salvation. It's saying equals. It's not saying that's what it means. It, it, it equals Jesus, the Son of God, the Savior of mankind, God incarnate. So they're saying these things, but let me go down here to where it says uh, in the, the Hebrew origin Jesus, i.e. Yahushua. But this is what's interesting. We'll, we'll read that because we're going to get to the Hebrew origin. That is the true name, is the Hebrew origin, okay? Not this, not Jesus. If you go to the Thayer's Greek lexicon for Jesus, this is what it says. When I click on, click on it, it says, sorry, but we couldn't find any information on the Hebrew word. And then it shows these, these Hebrew letterings. This is the Greek. This is the Thayer's Greek lexicon for the name Jesus. So there's no definition. They're just saying that it equals this, but that's not what it is. Let's see what the Hebrew origin is, which is 83091. That is Yahushua. That's what his name is, Yahushua, or Yahusha, or Yeshua, some, pretty close. We may not know the perfect, but you're definitely in the right direction when you say Yahshua, Yahushua. Or Yahusha, from all the studies, Yahusha is probably the closest. That's the Hebrew origin. That's the root. There is no definition for it, Jesus. It's just saying equal to. But the information that I received, for those of you who want to be bold enough to ask for me to send that to you, I have got some information, again, that will blow you away. Loads of screenshots for those who want to know, that really want to know, 
where the, where this came from, where this ISUs came from. Let me know and I'll send I'll send that. I will forward, forward that to you. I'm also going to put the link of that which send me on this journey that I cannot ignore anymore. And the link that link that will be in the description. Let's see if I find out where it is. I'm going to find out the right right notes here. Not this one. I'm going to scroll down a little bit more here. Maybe it's the last note. I got a lot of Ned's notes. I should have put the titles on here, but I didn't do that, did I? <laughs> but it is... I'm going to have to find it here on my phone. So hold on a minute, you all. But I'm going to share this with you. And then I'm going to go do another little breakdown that you're going to find quite, quite fascinating. But the, the title of this link is, oh, I know. It's right here in my email. Let me go back. And, uh, okay, where I go, I just got to go here to my email. Okay, here it is. It's, uh, the title of this is, Does Baal Gad Equal the Lord God of Christianity? That's the title. Let me tell you, the research on this was, was quite, as I said, very shocking. That can, it cannot be denied. So, as I said, this is what led me down here. But, okay, let's let's go here now. Let's start putting, connecting a few more dots here. I am not into gematria, but there is something, there's something to be said about numbers. There really is. Okay, let's, let's start with this. We have 66 books, which is the canonized, scriptures and we won't go into how that came about and how Constantine it was involved in, in in this I won't go down there because it would take too long but I will tell you that there were books that were part of this of these 66 that were removed a lot of you that are seeking for the truth know this such as Enoch First and Second Estrus, Ecclesiasticus, Jasher, First and Second Baruch. We have Jubilees, the Maccabees, and there's more. So why remove these? Because I believe, aside from a lot of the historical evidence that connect the dots, there were a lot of other things prophetically that sp speak of this time that we're in right now. A lot of the dots that would have connected so much for many that they don't have that because it was removed. Why couldn't they have left Enoch and made it 67 books? Or maybe Enoch and Jasher and say 68 books? Or maybe just the Maccabees? Why remove them and bring it down to 66? So keep that in mind. We have 66 books. Let's add another interesting fact. We have the 5013C. Okay. Let's add that up. 5 plus 1 equals 6. 3 is the third letter of the al alphabet, and the 3 after the C is 3. So we have 5 plus 1 is 6. C, which is 3 plus 3, is 6. Now you have your double 6 there. Okay, so we have two double sixes, 66 books. We have 501c3. And now, Iesus, which is Jesus. The Greek is 2424. 24. 24, 2 plus 4 is 6, and 2 plus 4 is 6. Are we seeing a little bit of a connection here? 
or a mite? Is this just a coincidence? I don't think so. I think there's something here that smells pretty nasty. And a lot of us have been deceived. We're so busy looking at some of these other things that we're missing the greatest thing of which so much, so many of us have been deceived by. And that's the very name. I've always been disturbed. And I've shared with some people along the way. And I said, you know what? I just thinking about it, just saying, Lord God. I'm like, there are lots of Lords because the Lord is Baal. And, and which also means master. There are a lot of masters out there. There are a lot of gods out there. So which God are we talking about? Which masters are we talking about? Oh, oh, we're, we're talking about the one up there in heaven. You know, the one who made everything. Oh, really? That's interesting. Now, I say that. I, I, I'm kind of saying that tongue-in-cheek and facetious. It's, it's really, when you think about it, when he says, don't take his name in vain, what does vain mean, beloved? This is what has been done to his name. Now, I know vain is more like a conceited than taking his name, and, they're, and, and they've applied something in there. There's other meanings to vain aside from that, but let's really go into... Okay. Without effect. Unimportant. Worthless. They have made the name of our Yahuwah without effect. Vain, unimportant, and worthless because they just use a generic name that they slapped throughout all these Bibles by saying Lord God. And when you go check out the link and read about it, you're going to be like, Wow, that's all I'm going to say is you're going to be shocked. For those who really, really want to search this out, you can explain it away. That's between you and the Father. You can explain and do anything that you want to continue to go down the road you want to go down. But as far as me in this house, meaning my body, my temple, after what I've been shown, there's no, I, I've crossed over now. There is no, there's no turning back for me. Um, I will no longer say Lord. I will no longer say God. Of course, I've been saying Yahuwah, Elohim, but there's sometimes I interchange, and even in some of the songs that I've sang throughout my walk, I have sang Lord and God, but mostly I try to say Yahweh, or I'll interchange Yeshua with Jesus. But as I was talking to the Father about this, he says, as of this day, you will no longer address me in that way. Because that's not who he is. He's not Lord. He's not God. And Jesus and Yahushua is not Jesus. He's Yahushua or Yahusha. That's his real name. It's like, I, I have a sister. You, you, a lot of you know her. Some of you don't. Her name is Deanna. Her name is not uh, Dana. Her name is not, or even, her name is not um, Yvonne. Her, her, her name is not Julie. Her name is Deanna. If I were to say, hey, Julie, she will not turn around and answer me. If I say, hey, Deanna, she will turn around and acknowledge because I called her by her name. Now, of course, even though, though there are those of us who've called out and said, Lord God, and we've said, Jesus, he's answered us. Because in our ignorance, because of all this deception and this ignorance, as I said, as I read to you in Acts 17, 30, that in these times of ignorance, he winked at it because he knows we were ignorant. We didn't know these things. But we're coming into a time where he's revealing it to those who love the truth. He's revealing to us his name. And he's commanding all men, all mankind, everywhere to repent. 
You can't claim ignorance. There's going to come a time when you will not be able to claim ignorance for those who know the truth. Now, I'll tell you why I struggled with this and why I, I have gone down this path and I decided to not go down that path anymore. And this is why. It has to do with the sacred namers. I want you all to know that I do not in any way endorse the sacred namers. And it's because of these sacred namers that I have avoided going down this path that the Father has me going down now that I cannot avoid anymore because of the spirit that they have been from. Because they have judged and they have condemned those who say Lord, God, or Jesus. They have condemned them to hell. You're going to do that in their ignorance? It says here, in the, time, and, and the times of this ignorance, this is an axe. Yahuwah winked at, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. So he winked at it. But there are those that have condemned them and would still condemn them. And I don't condemn any of you because I have come to know him when he apprehended me as Lord God and as Jesus. But at, still fairly at, at the new stages of my walk, he told me, Jesus said he's Yeshua. And Yahushua, you know, it started to, things started to really open up to me. And I knew his, his name fairly in the beginning. And as I said, the reason why I have not thrown myself into this, and I came to a somewhat of an impasse and was going to be relocating with another family, families who, um, who keep Sabbath, who keep the feasts and do the things that I myself have been doing for a number for about eight years now. It's been very lonely the past few years because he's pulled me out of the Messianic movement because of the infiltration, just like I, the infiltration with Christianity with the Masons and the Me Messianics with the Kabbalah that's been coming in and the Talmud and these rabbinic Judaism that has entered in. And they're, they've been talking about a Yeshua, but not the one of the scriptures. So many in the churches, the 501c3 talking about a Jesus, but not the one of the scriptures in many ways because they are presenting a lawless Messiah. I know that's, this is why when you want to defame or you want to make the name, as I said, vain, don't take his name in vain. If you want to make his name worthless or meaningless, because Lord and God are worthless and meaningless, when you find out what they really, really mean, you won't want to be calling him Lord and God anymore. When you really, really find out what Jesus means, you'll want to call him by his real name. At least I do. Regardless now of what the sacred namers have done, because they have been, the father's not pleased. They have come about it with a wrong spirit. And that's why I will not endorse them. I don't endorse sacred namers, even though I want to say his name. As the song says, I give you all the glory and the honor that's due your name. That's due his name. You know that scripture that says, um, at, at his name? What name? I say at the name of Yahushua, every knee shall bow and tongue confess that he is not Lord. He is Yahuwah. He's the master. He's Yahuwah. He's not Baal. Taking a little pause here. Thank you, Father. It's not easy for me to share this. As I said, I, I, and there's another thing, there's there, so I do not endorse and I do not stand behind the sacred namers, even though he is calling me to no longer say the word Lord or God or Jesus. That's what he has spoken to me to do. 
and I'm not here to condemn any of you if you still do. Not at all. I just say you bring this to the Father, but I'm telling you what I'm going to do. And it's my responsibility that once he's shown me these things that I need to convey it and share it with you all. Especially with the information that, that you will have access to. A link and then to those who want more. And a lot of pictures to, you know, the picture <laughs> say a lot. Please ask. You can find my email in my about page. You can email me and I will send it to you. I will send you a copy. That goes into a lot of detail about what Iasus means. The one that you will see the link goes into a lot of Baal Gad, what that means, what Lord and God mean. The other information goes into Iasus in depth. So it's, it's covering all those areas. I will also will not endorse. I know that some of you who I, I do love and are, are coming to this understanding and, and, and learning about his name, I don't fully endorse the Et Zephyr, and I'll tell you why. There have been some things that have been revealed about it that uh, has a little bit of a Kabbalah edge to it. Anything that has to do with Kabbalah, I will not have anything to do with it. I don't care how right. You can be 99% right, but if you got 1% Kabbalah, I, will, I won't. That's just one. The other is, in order for you to buy the Et Zephyr, the lowest... If you if you go to their website, it's $95. I will never pay $95 for a Bible. I will that when it comes to his word, truly, even when it comes to music, this is why the music of Spirit Song will never be anything that will be for sale. Because freely he has given me in my prayer closet. So freely I will give. The music can be downloaded for free. And it's same with the word. His word is not should never be for sale. Never. We should never profit off of his word. So even if there was a lot of investment, a lot of money that was put into this, and there needs to be something to compensate for that, okay, I, I, I'll go even as far as to say, okay, but ninety-five dollars? No, that I'm not. I, that is not an okay for me. There's no way that I can justify that. Just like I can't justify what a lot of these megachurches, what they're doing to uh, put into their coffers. Even if you're using the right name and you've done a lot of good in that way, I will not. I cannot endorse that. I will use my New King James uh, version. And when I see Lord and I see God, I just say Yahuwah Elohim. When I see Jesus, I say Yahusha. When I see Christ, I say Mashiach or Messiah. I don't need to pay $95 to be able to do that with the one that I presently have. So that's that's where I stand. And if you all know me, I, I'm not here taking sides. I'm not here in this camp or I'm not here in that camp. I am a follower of Yahushua Messiah. I'm not a Christian. I'm not a messianic because I, I, I see what Christianity, where they have gone, how they've gone over the edge and how apostate they become. And I see the messianic movement. I see a, the messy antics and how they got a gazillion calendars in this way that you keep Sabbath and this you, can't, you have to do it this way and, and, and that way. And I've been there. I, I've seen the confusion. I've seen the antics with that, the messy antics. There may be a right calendar. There may be an exact right way to say his name. I think we need to go come as close as we need to come. Yes. You, you mean to tell, let me give you an example. The Hebrew name for Isaac is Itzhak. That's pretty close, isn't it? Isaac, Itzhak. How about Jacob, Yahakob? Jacob, Yahakob, that's pretty close. Now, you're going to try to tell me that Jesus sounds close to Yahushua? Not by far. Something happened here. When you even see the pictures of, this is why he tells us not to make any images. If you ask for this information, I send it to you. And you see the pictures and how they represent something 
uh, of certain figures in Catholicism, whatever, you're going to be like, whoa, this is why I will never put pictures up. Uh, even the cross, there's some things I have with the cross, but I don't have a cross on my, on my walls or anything like that. Or no, I mean, if there's a cross kind of outside that, that doesn't bother me too much. It's not, but especially the pictures, the pictures, all these different pictures of Yahushua. No, that's, that's idolatry. That's, 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 that's a, he tells us not to make these graven images. That's one of the commandments that some of you think he nailed to the cross. Oh, the tree. Just saying. Where is the honor? Where is the reverence? Where is the holiness? Where is the fear? And just saying, Lord God. Or just saying Jesus to some people they have come to that place as much as they are able but when you say his name his real name when you say Yahuwah Elohim that's much more personal that's much more intimate that's much more reverent when you call him by his name that's respectful you show people respect when you call them by their real name. You don't do it when you say, hey, you or miss. Hey, miss. Hey, LR. That to me is a bit slang. So when you say Lord God and Jesus to me, that's like saying it's slang. It's not calling them by their real name. Now he has answered, as I said, in our ignorance. But there is coming a time when we're going to have to, like this saying, there's this saying. Many are called. We've heard this, right? Many are called, but few are chosen. Many will say in that day, Lord, Lord. But few are going to say, Yahusha or Yahushua. Seriously, serious. Because those who are going to call him just Lord, Lord, and just like, hey, hey, Lord, What's Lord, when you find out what it really means, you'll find out that we have been saying his name in vain by doing this and not calling him by his real name. When you call somebody by their name, it's, it's much more respectful and honorable. And if we are going to do that for one another and call each other by our real names, how much more why do we think that we can we can do that to him and he's okay with it? But meanwhile, we're not okay with it if we don't call each other and respect each other by the real names that we've been given. Why is it okay to not do that with our Yahuwah Elohim? Why is it okay not to do that with our Yahusha Messiah? Why? What's the difference? If somebody came from another country and their name was Abdul Shamar, I would not call him anything else. I would not say A.S. Hey, A.S. No, I'd call him by his name. No matter what country they came from, I'm going to call them by their name and not try to look for an English translation of their name. And like I said, the way they've done that with Yahushua, Iesus, really, that's not the translation. That's not even close. So if we're not good with it for each other, we ought not to be good with it. And we're not showing him the honor and the praise that's due his name. There is no other name by which man can be saved. What name is that? I want to say it by the real name. When the angel came to Miriam and Yosef and to the shepherds, they did not say, Jesus. They said, Yahushua. That's the name. There is something to the name. Let me uh, read to you a few scriptures. And of course, they're going to have God and they're going to have Jesus. And I'm going to tell you the name here. Therefore, Elohim has highly exalted him, who's him, capital H, and bestowed on him the name the name that is above every name, 
that at the name, they're saying Jesus, but I'm not, at the name of Yahushua, because that's the Hebrew origin, that's the true name, that at the name of Yahushua, every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Yahushua Messiah is the master, to the glory of Elohim, the Father. And Ephesians 1.21, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. Acts 4, 12. And there is salvation no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. What name is that? Yahushua HaMashiach. That's his real name. Matthew 28, 19. Go therefore and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. That is the Ruach HaKodesh. Cut. It is set. Cut. Kodesh is set apart. It's that set apart spirit. Kadosh is holy. So we're baptizing. Is that what we're doing? We're baptizing them in the name, in the name of the Father, Yahuwah, Elohim, the Son, Yahusha, the Messiah, and the Holy Spirit, the Ruach Hakodesh. Psalm 148, 13, let them praise the name of Yahuwah, for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above the earth and heaven. Matthew 6, 9, pray then like this, our Father in heaven, hallowed, which means holy, kadosh, be your name. What name is that? Yes, it's Father, but it's Yahuwah, Yahuwah Elohim, that is set apart, it's holy. It's not Lord God. Those aren't names. They are, but not what you think. As I said, you'll find out for those who will really want to search these matters out. So I'm reading to you a few of these scriptures. John 15, 16. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name. I know. Many of you have used the name of Jesus. And you've seen miracles, and he has worked miracles. But as I said, there's going to come a time when you can no longer be ignorant and just use a, a name that is, that is one that they've given an equivalent of that really isn't the name. As I said, Iesus is not equal with Yahushua. That is the name of Yahushua. That whatever we ask, the Father, Abba, Yahuwah, in the name of Yahushua, he may give it to you. It could be that a lot of you haven't received things because, because it's getting to the point where you need to start finding out what name you need to be saying. And Yahushua came and said to them, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Okay, so these are just some of the, just wanted to share with you about the name. I hope, Father, I said everything I needed to say. I know this was, this was a lot. And I hope that um, you can bring this before, before him on these matters. Please click on that link, check it out. And for those who want more to know about this Iesus and where that really came from and the origins of all that and how pagan it is, just let me know and I will send that to you. As I was saying to you before, I have searched some of these things out, but because the, the waters have been muddied and those who were, um, what they have done, it's, it's, it's like those, this is why I don't get into the whole thing with flat earth and the globe and all that, although I do believe we live on a flatted plane. But I'm not going to I'm not going to push that and say you need to believe that. I've, I've done it. I've searched it out myself. Nobody's going to convince me otherwise. But does that mean I will not fellowship with you because you don't believe that? No, that does not mean that. And those of you who are going to be uh, really nitpicking about these changes, rather than really looking at what has fully been changed and how we've been duped on the highest level, on the highest level, the very top, 
We're too busy looking down here. We don't realize we've been so deceived by what they did up here. We need to come up higher. We need to see things from the way he sees it. Then see what's really been done. And give him all the glory and the honor that's due his name. His name. Not the name that they gave us, that they put in the scriptures. That's generic. That's been modified. That's been altered. That's not his true name. They're true names. The name of the Father and the name of the Son. Now, uh, I think I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm going to be going out with my daughter all day tomorrow. Wednesday, I'm hoping to share with you part five of Thy Hidden Ones. Me and several others are going to be going on a, an extended fast. I think it's perfect timing on spiritual warfare. There are others if you want to join us, yes, but the few, the, those of us who have really committed to this, we're going to come together, pray together, and present each other's requests and stuff that we'll be praying about while we're fasting. I'm hoping we can do more of these and that others will want to join in. But right now, this is a start. So be praying about that for those who want to join us the next time we do this. Um, we're, it's just something that I believe that the Father is bringing us on another level of this, not just to be fasting individually, but start fasting with other members of the body of Messiah. So um, I want to let you all know that I love you. Uh, this went on almost an hour, but Father, I hope I shared everything I needed to share with this. I think it was enough. I didn't want it to go into detail or read the things that you need to. If you really want to know the truth, you need to be a good Berean. You need to search these things out. You need to bring them before the Father, and you need to yourself be convinced on what you need to do. But I know that I'm convinced regardless of what anybody will say if there are those of you who want to make a comment and you want to say whatever you want to say um if it's respectful i will do my best to reply but if it's not it will be it will be removed it will be removed because there's nothing that you're going to say just based on your own feelings of what you've been doing all your life or what so and so has told you if you're not going to search these matters out, if you've got a lot of good, good evidence that can rebut after you've searched these matters out, I'd like to see it. But I will guarantee you that you will not. It will, you, maybe it, you might share about a drop in the bucket compared to the overwhelming evidence that is otherwise. There's a whole lot of evidence. There's a whole lot of proof to these things that I'm telling you about, despite those who have muddied the waters and have kept us from this. So, beloved brothers and sisters in Yahusha, the Messiah, the Redeemer, the Savior, as far as me, this vessel, this vessel, this house, not only am I going to serve my Yahuwah, but I'm going to call him by his name because I love him and I respect him as I would respect any of you and call you by your name. I'm going to call him by his name, not the one that they gave us conveniently and the things that they conveniently removed and everything that they put together systematically seems to line up with 666 two times over. So with that said, I do want to bid you all Shalom.